And welcome back to video number two, um, Fusion 360, working on my soft jaws. I think this is about where we left off. YouTube caught me by surprise there. Uh, only allows me 15 minutes, which I should have known better. So we'll start over from right here. I believe that's where I left off. Um, I need to get rid of that in the middle. I left that by accident. So I'm going to extrude again. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Hit E for extrude. I'm going to select the top of that. I want to cut it and I'm just going to drop it all the way down to get rid of it and click OK. There, now that I have the basic profile out that I need, we're going to take this. We're going to head right over to go up here to the upper left corner, click on that, and we're going to go to Cam. And I like to get squared away on the top for a start, so we're going to hit top. Oh, oops, back down here a little bit. It looks like I'm going to need to shift this a little bit. To get it back parallel so we're going to go back into model we're going to move this so we're going to modify move highlight the whole thing and give it a little turn right it should be 10 degrees yep the reason it's 10 degrees is because my other design was off 10 degrees click ok go back over here go back into cam and here we go. I'll shorten these ones up so we don't need to see those. Now we need to make a new setup. We need to do that right up here in the left hand corner. So we're going to click setup and that's going to give me all my blocks and stuff. And I believe it's got three bodies picked right here. And that's why it's so wide over here. Um, and what we need to do here is uh, I think it's picking up the knife itself that was moved over in the previous one for doing the modeling part. So we're just going to close those and then I'm going to pick the two sides. There, I'm going to click that one and this one and it should split the difference for me with my X, Y, and Z which it did. And now I want to bring this up a little bit right here. So that's my soft jaws or my voice actually is this orientation right here right and then I'm going to scroll down so I can see what I'm doing and I like to get my up in this corner is where I like to start all of my stuff um, so if you click this part here, Z, it does a flip, flips it over the other way. We don't want that. What you want to do is click on this section right here and then just click on the top and it'll orientate your Z up and down. And there it is up. Now X, we want X to go this way and we want Y to go this way. So what I need to do here is click on I can spin this thing and be all set. That's not going to work that way either. What I need to do is go to this, click over here, X and, yep, right there, Z axis and X axis. So now if I click on this section here and this side of the wall here, it should flip my X over, which it did. So that just orientates your X the way it's supposed to be. Now it's stock box point. I don't want that over here to the right here. I want to click on this. I want to go to selected point, puts me way up there. Click on this little white dot right here, and then you can click right on the corner of your thing. Boom, right there. Okay. So there, that's where we want to be, right there like that. Right on that corner, and we should be good for this part. Um, the stock, we do not want to add any extra stock, so we're going to click on this, say no additional stock. And that's going to bring our stock to the exact spot we want it to be. And click OK. And there we are. Now we actually want to be able to mill this section out right here. So we're going to use uh, I just 3D Adaptive. You really don't need to use 3D Adaptive, but that's what I'm going to use for this one. And tool number 14, that happens to be my tool number 14, is my 3 16 5 flute carbide. That's for doing steel. Uh, later on, I'm going to have to change this when I figure out what tooling number I'd like to use. I still plan on using 3 16 so but it's probably going to be a 2 flute for aluminum. Um, so I'll just click on the geometry and I want to pick that and I'm going to shift and middle button to roll and that this should be what we need and since it's not that deep it's only a 0 0.062 I don't really need to do multiple depths uh, this one right here usually I never have to touch that that just gives you your height and stuff like that I think later when I want to shave some time off my stuff I'll be able to I'll use this to get my height closer to my workpiece so I'm not lifting up and retracting as high. 
passes is usually a, right here where you have stock to leave. We don't want to leave any stock because I don't want it to work. I want it to be exactly where I have it. Maximum roughing step down 0 0.39701. That's way more than what we need, so we're fine there. I think uh, we're all set. Let's see what it looks like. Click OK. It's going to go over here. It's, it's doing its percentages <clears throat> until it calculates. 21%. And 66. And that is not what I want. Not at all. You can see where it actually put it in the center on me. Let's see we're clicking on it again. Let's click on it and it brings it up. So we're going we're gonna to edit that, definitely. I'm going to try a couple things here. I'm going to go back to my geometry again. And I'm going to get rid of those, and I'm going to try to select something different. Um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Click on the edge right there. And I'm going to click on this edge, which I thought I did last time, but... We're going to try this again. Click OK. Oh man, there it goes again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Nope. I'm going to edit that again. Alright. Oh, we don't want rest machining. Maybe that's why. Stock contours, get rid of those. Let's try right here and right here. Maybe this is what I need. That looks better. So that's why I wanted to, to get rid of stock contours. For some reason, it's doing helical. It, it didn't need to do that. But we'll go up here to this simulate. Click simulate and click play. I already have my stock option out here. Click play to see what it's going to do. It's going to helical down, and it looks like uh, over here for tool tool path. You can pick all tools, or you can go to tail. Tail seems to work better. This gives you. We can also fit transparent too, so we can kind of see the get underneath it what it's doing. That seems like that's going to work all right. And that little red spot up there is telling it when it goes. It, it means it's hitting too hard. Um, you can see it down here in the line too, but the timeline actually tells you what it is. Rapid collision with stock. But I believe it's talking about this section right here that is not there. It thinks it's there, but it's not there. Um, so I'm hoping uh, that's not going to give me any trouble. So that's basically it right there. As um, long as I get my everything spaced apart properly when I machine this, which we'll do in the next video. We'll go through that and... I'll show you the setup and how I machine that. And then the following video, we'll actually put the knife blade in there and we'll face mill it. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to click close on this. And then in order to output this, you you have it highlighted. You go up here to Actions and this is Post Process. And this is just giving me a warning the Post Processor uh, default system. I just click Yes to go back to default. Um, currently, right now, I'm using... Um, I'm using this one right here, emc.cps, Generic Enhanced Machine Controller, EMC. It seems to work for everything I need it for right now because I'm not that advanced into it, I guess, right now. I did talk to Tormach the other day there, and uh, one of the salesmen and uh, the techs actually told me that uh, Autodesk is working with those guys to come up with a, a, a post to, to output the stuff. Uh, they're still having a little bit of issues with it, so it should be up hopefully this sometime this year. Um, so we have this right here, so just program name or number. Just, pro, just name it to what you want it to be named. Um, I think I'm going to name it as a uh, soft jaw. And I usually like to put a version one because there's usually more, usually screw up. So we're going to click Control C to copy it. I'm coming down here to program, program comment. Control V. And then I'm going to post it. And this is going to ask me now where I want to store this. Uh, do I want to put it in my app data local Fusion 360? Or would I like to put it in a different place? Um, for right now, that's where I'm going to put it. Just click Save. And then it's actually going to come up in a notepad. And it's going to give me the code, the G code, so I can look through it, figure out what I need to do from there if it's wrong. It takes a little bit. There it is. Right there. Uh, right here is telling me that it's tool 14, which I'm going to go back and change. 
Um, tell me the diameter of it. And flat end mill. There's all my G codes. Adaptive three. And actually, you can get an idea too of how long this is going to take. I'll minimize this. If we go back into simulate, we can head over here to statistics, and it's going to tell us it's going to take 14 minutes. But that's actually kind of off because uh, what we need to do is figure out you know what size and I'm going to use three sixteenths, two flute, and aluminum. Um, so this is what we need to do is we need to find G Wizard. Takes a little while to load. And here's G Wizard. So then we're going to go to material is going to be aluminum. Aluminum 661. I believe the end mill I will be using is a high speed. It's a standard one. Tool diameter is 0.1875 for 316. It is a two flute. My cut depth is going to be 0 0.06. Might as well say just 63 instead of 65. And then just click over here anywhere else and it'll tell you what you're gonna what you can come up with. So when I do that, it's actually he looking down. Yeah, cut width is going to be the, the 0.1875 um, to start out with. The Tormax 770, uh, the high RPMs, is 10,000. I usually don't like to run at 10,000 if I don't have to. But my chip load, I believe I'm going to... 0.018, that's, that's, that's actually fairly good. But I'm getting a deflection of a little too much. I usually want to keep it around 0.001. Um, so I'm going to slow my RPMs down to 8,000. See what that gives me. Not for that, but it gives me 28 for there. I think I'm still going to be all right. Uh, I'm on aggressive right now, so let's back this off to conservative a little bit and see what we're going to come up with. That's better. I kind of like that right there. A um, little bit of a finish, not much. So we're looking at uh, 8,000 RPMs at 14 inches a minute, and plunge is 6.9. So we'll go back and we'll punch those numbers in and see what we come up with. What did I say those again? 8,014 and 6.9. Do that right here. So it's 8,000. Oops. And then we want to do the cut feed rate is 14. And I'll keep this the same too. The lead in, lead out is 14. 14. Ramp 14, plunge free date 6.9. We'll just say 6. This will definitely change our stuff a little bit. So we're going to click OK. And as soon as it gets done, we'll hit the simulate. Statistics five minutes. It's a little better. Oh, you know, it's a little faster speed. It's taking a little bit more material out. Click close. And I believe that should be it for this video. Um, I think I've covered most of the stuff. In the next video, we will put this in the vise with a spacer, set everything up, mill it out. And then in the following video, I will actually put the steel knife in there and we'll face mill it to get it down where it's supposed to be. Thank you for watching.